Acts chapter 5. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Remember, this is when the early church, uh, everyone had everything in com common, no one lacked anything, and people sold their land and brought the price to the apostles, and then they distributed to the poor and needy and so forth. But Peter, a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing those words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young man arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours later, after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon all, as as many had heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And of the great and of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at, at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might ever overshadow some of them. Then came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed, every one. Then the high priest, the pastors, the ordained of men, rose up, and all they were with them, that were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people, all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and said, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple of the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. They're standing in the churches. They don't have any papers. They're not authorized to speak. You see the parallel of today? The pastors and the priests have kept the apostles, the prophets of God, out of the churches to keep the people in sin. And they have great indignation to the Holy Ghost-filled people, the servants of the Lord, who has been sent out into the harvest. And much of the harvest is in the churches, but the churches have been shut up by these pastors who lie to the people, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their consciences seared as with a hot iron because they have denied the power of Christ, they hate the power of Christ and the power of resurrection, 
and they themselves are uncircumcised in the heart, always resisting the Holy Ghost every time. And this is the condition of the churches right now.